Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to change the batteries on your WPTU-1 KVA UPS. This particular one is branded Mesa, but there is a similar one which is branded RCT, standing for Rectron. Now you may have found that the UPS initially may have given you quite a long backup time, but it reduces significantly because they use lead acid batteries in here, and lead acid batteries decay between 10 to 30% a year. So within a short time, you'll find that your standby time is greatly reduced. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your batteries to get your original standby time back. Make sure the unit is unplugged and off. You can see that the display is dark. It is completely off. Using a star screwdriver with a posi-driv tip, that means that it's a little bit flat at the end of the screwdriver. The reason why I use this type of screwdriver is these screws, the heads often strip quite easily. So I first go around with this type of screwdriver. There's the posi drift tip. I think it's a PZ2. For example, if you compare it to this tip, this tip will not be suitable for these type of screws. Right, so I go around and make sure that I've loosened each screw. There are two silver ones on the back. Once you've removed your three screws on each side, plus the two at the back, put the UPS upright. I now take my fingers and I pull the cover upwards, keeping my fingers away from any of the circuits. As you can see, I'm pulling it upwards and open. Now on this unit, there are only two batteries. They are 12 volt, nine amp hour units. In order to replace them, I need to remove this plate. There are two screws holding the plate in place. If this plate is in your way, you can just cut this cable tie so that the plate can be removed from the unit. So I'm just going to remove that cable tie just to get this plate out of the way. I don't want it to be falling inwards and damaging anything. Right, so I now have access to my two batteries. Right, I first start by removing these two connectors on the top battery. Now these batteries are connected in series. It's very important to get the wiring layout done correctly. So just to show you, this wire over here is black because it is coming from the black underneath here. So it's going negative to positive on the top battery and then the negative of the top battery is going to the MOSFET which are installed underneath there. So this wire here which is going to the electric circuits on the side is the one which is connected over here. You might find that it is quite tight. You might need considerable force. All right, this one has been removed. I'll pull it to the side and uh, i just remove this one. Now, if it's not coming out and it's very difficult, you can actually bend the terminal up so that it's easier to yank out. I'll wiggle it a little bit and there it's come off. Now I can remove this topmost battery. Right, this battery, I can just remove it like that and I just need to now disconnect these two wires. As you can see, this wire is just a jumper because this negative goes to the positive of the other battery. So I just need to pull on this. And here's the positive. I just remove this one. It's now time to change the old batteries. Try replace them with the same specification for the battery. 12 volt, 9 amp hours. If you are unable to get the 9 amp hour batteries, I have had some success with 8 amp hour gel batteries. Obviously battery choice is your decision. One thing you'll have to keep in mind is if you are using a different battery specification, for example if it is a 7 amp hour or an 8 amp hour battery, you might notice that the width here of this terminal is smaller than the width of the 9 amp hour terminal. That means that the connector is going to be oversized for the terminal. In such a case, you can just reduce the size of the mouth of the connector by squeezing it with pliers or you can just depress the sides so that it has a snug fit on the reduced connector size. But ideally, try to replace it with the same specification battery, a 9 amp hour 12 volt battery. Right, these sponges need to be put onto the new battery. So what I need to do is I need to remove this by lifting it off. There we go, one. And as you can see, it is tearing on mine. 
but it doesn't matter as long as I can get most of it off. You can also take a blade and slice this off and then just stick it on the new battery. For example, I can take a blade and just slice it off like this and then just stick it onto the new battery. So over here, here is my replacement battery. The one sponge was fine, I can stick it down, but the other sponge I had to slice off. So all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of double-sided tape, or you could use some cold glue and just put two or three dabs here and stick it on. In my case, I'm just going to use some thin double-sided tape. Right, there we go. The two sponges are now installed and now I just need to wire up the batteries and reinstall them. Right, so the one of the sponges goes to the bottom. I'm first putting it this way so I can connect the cables. Right, I take the positive lead that is connected to the unit and I install it on the positive of the bottom battery. Right, that is tight. And I take the fly lead. I'm just gonna pinch this a little bit. Just want it to be very tight. Right, so I now take this one and I connect it to the negative. Right, it's nice and tight. Now I flip the battery down. Please be very careful that the leads do not short out the battery. Don't let the red wire touch the black wire. Now I seat the battery inside there. There's a raised section at the back to keep the battery in place. Right, holding the wires out of the way, I now bring the next battery and I just bring it in sideways and then I press it in. Be very careful not to let the battery terminals touch on the chassis of the UPS. Now I'm just retightening these heads here, these connectors. Now remember that the fly lead goes to the positive. Now at this point, I recommend first installing the plate. So I'm installing the plate first. Now the battery is securely placed. Now I can connect the negative to this terminal. Keep in mind it may spark. Don't get a fright if it makes a arc sound. Okay, in this case there was no spark and I'm just going to depress this onto the terminal. Right, now I just need to tie these wires like it was Right, I've just looped this cable tie around the wires. Notice it's not very tight, the wires can still move. Just check your connections that they're all tight. Make sure each battery is seated correctly and unable to move. Right, make sure the wires are not in the way. They are pushed towards the center there. And now I can put the cover back on. Put the cover back on. Right, good as new. Thanks for watching and cheers.